my channel today I'm going to be doing a video all about needle punch embroidery so it is going to be a beginner's guide video but I've done it especially here in the UK because when I was learning how to do needle punch embroidery I found it quite difficult to find the right fabrics and a needle punch in general I've had lots of questions on social media since posting needle punch embroidery pieces of work about where I get the fabric from, where I get the needles from, and all of that kind of thing because a lot of people kind of struggle to get, you know, going with it. So this video I'll show you all about that and I'll show you a little project. I'm going to be doing this project here, this little cloud in this video today. I'll show you some of my other pieces that I've worked on as well so you can see what you can achieve with needle punch embroidery. So with that being said, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you're new to needle punch embroidery or if you'd like more videos on this topic because I'm a bit of a novice as well, I've only just started this year and yeah, I'm just loving it so much so I thought I would share it with you guys so you can learn too. So to get started, I'm going to show you some examples of needle punch embroidery pieces that I've made and kind of how I found my feet with it, show you the first piece that I ever did and the progress and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's helpful for you, so let's get started. So to start off with, with, I'm going to show you a few examples of needle felt projects that I've made just to kind of show you what the effect looks like. This one is my first completed project so you can see a lot of sort of work's gone into this one, lots of different textures of wool and if you turn it around you can see that this side has got more of a texture to it. So it really depends what kind of finish you want. You can either have um, this kind of finish or you can have the more um, chunky loop finish on the other side. I went for kind of a mixed texture finish because I wanted to experiment with the different walls and this was one of my first ones that I did so it was mainly about experimenting with shapes and yeah I just love the finish I think it's really lovely. When I started needle punching really struggled with the fabrics and choosing the fabrics and and getting the wool to actually stay. Now this is my first I would say successful <laughs> attempt. This was after you know trial and error and I'd actually brought a couple of different types of fabrics previously. So that's what's good about my video is that I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get it started and how it was successful. So this one as you can see is very messy. <laughs> yeah I was quite pleased, I thought I'd keep hold of it and show you it. It's just also a good way to see that it does take practice and it doesn't happen straight away. And then once I did this one is when I moved on to this one and this took I'd say about a week of evenings just sat there doing bits at a time and it was really nice to just not put pressure on it and to do little things so there's those two and then I wanted to make something a bit more uh, commercial looking in the sense that I could use this on um, clothing or whatever so I did a little rainbow like this and then that's the other side still not perfect but you can see the textures are sort of up and down but in terms of the finish, I was really, really happy with that. I think it was getting slowly better with each project. And then this is another one that I've just started, and now you can see I'm kind of able to do more intricate details, add in different colours. The textures are a lot more consistent. And the other side, you can see um, kind of a close-up of the stitching there. That's kind of a basis of where I've got to, and now I want to share beginner's tips on how to set it up and get yourself ready for needle punching. So in terms of tools, this is the tool I'm using. In the UK, you can either order one online, but I was wanting to find one in a store so I could actually see it in person. So I found this one in Hobbycraft. This one is the one you kind of probably see a lot online. It's good for beginners, I would say, because you've got the function of being able to move this needle at the top here. So let me explain it. These numbers here will dictate how big the loop is on the other side of the fabric. The bigger the loop, I would say the easier it is for the punch to stay there. You've got a very small loop and you've got a large loop. And I kind of had it on about in between seven and nine when I first started. I've now experimented with doing it smaller, but 
To get yourself started, I would say make sure that the, the needle length and the loop is bigger. That will just help you when you're practicing. And then this little needle set comes with these threaders. And there's two of them, but one of mine broke, so <laughs> they're quite flimsy. Um, but yeah, so these threaders help you obviously thread your needle punch needle. So I've got some wool here, or yarn, and this is just the Poundland wool. So this is a 50 gram, 150 MT. So what you do, you place this in the top, and that comes out at the bottom like that. You then take your bit of wool, place it in between the threaders, like this, thread that through, and then you take the threader again and you'll see there's a little hole at the top. The side that it comes through, you want to do it on the other side, pop it in there like that, put the wool in the middle. And then pull that through. So you're left with your needle looking like this. And then moving on to fabric. I get asked quite a lot on my social channels what fabric am I using and this seems to be the biggest struggle for people that are starting out with needle punching and finding the compatible fabrics for making this work. Now, I did struggle with this as well. I did actually find um, a couple of fabrics didn't work for me. And then I found these kind of pieces and these are available on Amazon. So this is the exact fabric that I got. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. It is a natural linen needlework fabric. And I actually just typed in uh, muslin, muslin fabric, and I came across this one, and this one worked. And this has four pieces for seven ninety nine, and the pieces I would say are quite big. You can see uh, they're about half a meter by half a meter square. So let's set up a project. What I'm using is a basic wooden embroidery hoop. Now, the better quality the hoop, the better quality your needle punching journey is going to be. Mine isn't the best quality, but I have made it work with this one. However, if you have a, a embroidery hoop that actually has a screw driver at the top, this one doesn't, um, you can get it as tight as possible and that would actually be better. So it's worth spending out a bit more money and it's something I'm going to be doing. But for this video and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be showing you the one that I've been using. You pop your hoop underneath the inside of your hoop and then pop this on top like that we'll cut off this excess here so once you've got it in your hoop you can see that this fabric at the moment is quite loose it's not very taut so what we need to do is tighten this up as much as possible in the hoop and if you're unsure to tighten it you just very gently go around the hoop and pull each piece like so and you'll see the kind of wood tries to come up so just each time just go around and make sure that it's in line and then tighten the top okay and then repeat the process and keep doing that until it's like a little drum you want to make sure that that you can always play music on it <laughs> that's good tightness I'm gonna try and make sure this is as tight as possible at the top here once your hoop is ready, your fabric's nice and tight, you're ready to start doing your needle punching. So what I recommend is start with the inside and this means you've got nice access to the back and what I'm going to do is a nice easy shape to start off with. So let's start there. If you pop in your needle punch, like so, it comes through the other side and you need to take this bit of thread and release it so it comes through the back. Now, once you've done that, you need to hold this tight on the other side. Hold on tight and just hold your finger, you can sort of see my shadow of my finger, on that piece. And then you want to go and do the next loop like that. As you're doing it, make sure the wall is not being pulled in any way from this. You want to make sure that it's loose so that it's able to feed through. So 
hold that bit tight at the back, you've just put your loop in and then you're moving on. But as you move on, you'll see a little loop appear at the back. You want to hold your finger on that first loop and then go on to your next one, like so. And again, hold your finger on that loop. And what I found is doing it that way, those first initial stitches that can be a bit temperamental in staying, manage to stay put and you're able to get the line work in that you need. And just keep going along, holding your finger on the loop on the back. And as you can see, they're staying in place. And then on the back, you can see that I'm holding on to those little loops for dear life. <laughs> as you can see, if I just pulled it, it pulls it out. So really important to kind of hold those loops in when you first start, if you're struggling to kind of get the loops to stay. Quick note as well, the thicker the wool and the bigger the needle, the better it will stay within your fabric. This one has got quite big holes. So from what I've learnt, it would be better if I had a bigger needle punch and a thicker yarn or thicker wool. It's, it still works with that tip of holding the back of the loops and I'm still getting a lovely finish, but that's why it takes a little bit of trial and error sometimes to get this going. And it is just because of the thickness of the needle and the wool itself. Obviously, the weave of this fabric is quite big. So just bear that in mind and if, if you're still getting problems and you're still not able to get it to hold like I have it's probably down to one of those factors either the needles too thin or the walls too thin so that's why it's good just to practice um, don't go straight in wanting to make a project just get a bit of fabric and do some test pieces first because you're guaranteed to kind of practice it and and find your way with it like I have um, and it just takes a little while to kind of get the hang of it. But once you get it, you'll be, you know, really fast in no time. So I'm just gonna carry on and do this outline. I'm gonna do a little cloud and then I'll be back and show you how to sort of fill in this bit as well. So once you reach your edge, what you want to do is just start going along the edge again, but on the inside. So very tightly next to this one start bringing those punches next to it like that now I'll show you the back kind of looks like this these little bubbles but as you fill this in the tighter you come across the thicker and the more dense this will be so I prefer to be as close to that line as possible and then you're getting a nice density on the back there so I'm going to fill this in a little tip as you're filling it in, if you start to notice that the fabric isn't as tight, then just hold your needle in place and just very gently pull those sides again and make sure that it's tight as you're doing it because you don't want that fabric to become loose. Um, it just makes it harder for you. So yeah, that's another little tip and I'm just gonna fill that in and carry on. Another thing to note is that I've always got my needle in the direction so that the wool is coming from the back and I'm always sort of tilting it so that the needle punch is facing like that. I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing it that way so that you're poking it in like that. Once you're done, just simply snip as close as you can to the stitching and you've got your finished cloud. So cute. So there we go, there's your little cloud shape and I actually love the textured side for the cloud. And then I'm going to add some little drips at the bottom as well and then I'll be back to kind of show you the finished design. Thank you. 
So what you can do when you've got a small shape like this and it's quite messy around the outside, you can actually do a reverse line. So I'm actually doing like the main stitch line around it so that it kind of creates like a neat outline for it. And obviously you get the puffy bits on the other side, but because it's mainly this side we want to see, it just creates a nice outline for those little shapes that need a little bit more definition. So it's finished, it's looking super cute. I actually lined the cloud in white as well. It's very subtle, but it just kind of keeps it all neat. And then did my little raindrops, all in different kind of sizes and stuff. Um, but it just goes to show you a really simple and easy make that you can do. And then turning it around, this is what the other side will look like. Obviously, you've got this edging here um, because I wanted to do the neatness on this side. But yeah, I think it's so nice. You can obviously have it either, but I like the fact the cloud had a texture, I thought it was super cute. So. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created this little cloud tutorial and the steps it took along the way to get started with needle punch embroidery. I promise if you practice and you follow these tips then it will become easier for you as well. In the description box below I will leave the link to the Amazon fabric that I purchased and also I'll leave a link to the embroidery hoops, I like to get mine from either Hobbycraft or Amazon again so I hope that helps you guys. Thank you so much for watching, again if you're new please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time, bye!